المحاضرتين راح اسوي راح نسوي برزنتيشن طيب اليوم هو we'll talk about uveitis <تصفيق> طبعا uveitis is a large topic we choose an overview and some of the uh, diseases that need special attention so uveitis is uh, strictly mean inflammation of uveal tissue only However, there is always associated inflammation of adjacent structure, such as retina, vitreous, sclera, and cornea. So we have many ways to classify uveitis. We have anatomical classification, uh, anterior, intermediate, and posterior. Anterior, it can be divided as follow. Iritis, inflammation of the iris, iridocyclitis, Inflammation of iris and parts of placata part of ciliary body. Cyclitis, parts um, of placata part of ciliary body is affected uh, dramatically. Intermediate uveitis is inflammation of parts of plana part of ciliary body and peripheral retina and underlying choroid. Co it's, co it's also called parts planitis. As we said earlier, Uveitis inflammation of the uveal tissue, sometimes adjacent structures are affected. Like in the intermediate uveitis, the bars plana is affected. The adjacent to it is the peripheral retina. Basilar uveitis inflammation of choroid. Usually there is associated adjacent retina and it's the term called chororetinitis. Ban uveitis when the inflammation in the whole uveal tissue. Another way of classification is clinical classification, depending on the course. Acute uveitis, usually sudden, and last less than three weeks. Chronic, when the onset is insidious, meaning gradual, and duration more than three weeks. Recurrent, when the uveitis keep recurring uh, periodically. Pathological classification can be divided at to according to the pathological lesion, either granulomatous uveitis or non-granulomatous uveitis. Granulomatous is usually inf infective in nature. Inflammation is gradual in onset, clinic in nature with minimal clinical feature. Uh, non-granulomatous uveitis is due to, uh, usually due to allergic or immuno-related uh, reaction usually acute uh, onset and short duration. And we can divide it uh, based on the etiology, infective, allergic, toxic, traumatic, uh, with non-infective non systemic disease and idiopathic uveitis. <coughs> idiopathic means there is no clear cause. So talk about anterovitis is usually inflammation of the iris and ciliary body. Symptom of uveitis redness, it's due to circumference congestion, pain towards at night. There is severe neurological pain referred to the forehead and skull, at the nose and teeth, lacrimation and photophobia without any mucobular and discharge. So this can be differentiate from the conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis, usually there is redness, there is discharge, uh, less photophobia, uh, less pain. It's more about discomfort. In uveitis, there is redness, pain, photophobia. Uh, <clears throat> so this, you can differentiate between the two. Impaired vision, also this is in uveitis. Usually conjunctivitis does not have impaired vision. Impaired vision is usually due to uh, plasmoid aqueous uh, and obesity in the media. Photophobia is due to pain induced by the pupillary constriction and ciliary spas because of the inflammation. So this is a symptom sign, circumferentially congestion. There is hyperemia around the limbus. And this is in the conjunctival part. In the anterior chamber, there is plasmoid aqueous uh, contain lymphocyte, uh, coagulated protein, and fibrous network. The sit lamp show presence of aqueous flare, just like particles are seen moving in the beam of the sit lamp. 
So I will show you a picture, uh, sorry, video, how to check for flare and cells in the uh, interior chamber. You can enter this website and see this video. Then we will continue. بتنتظرنا دكتور يعني نشوف المقطع؟ اي اي شوفوا دقيقة بنتظركم تشوفونا دقيقة. Okay, uh, you see the video. So the flare to con the matifta nafta flare or sim. The matifta nafta chuf the particle floating fil hawa kida. Had a nafsa flare or cells and you chuf the uveitis. Normally, aqueous, you cannot see the vessel. There is no cells floating. Usually, it's clear. There is a flare or cell, that's mean. There, there may be there is a uveitis. So, another sign is called cratic bursitate. Uh, its exudate tend to stick to the damage endothelium in the lower part of the cornea and triangular pattern due to conventional recurrent of the anterior chamber and the effect of the gravity. There are three main types of the KBs. First one is called fresh KB, multiple. Uh, Circular gray white color consists of lymphocyte. They are seen in active anterior uveitis. Other one is the old KB when it's old, when it's pigmented small, usually plasma cell mainly. Mutton fat are few large yellow, greasy, waxy KBs like this. For more large in size. It characteristic of the granulomatous uveitis. Another sign is called hypobion when the the cell are too many. This cell is accumulate and uh, be in the <coughs> inferior part of the anterior chamber. So it's a. Uh, Glycoside uh, poured out, which sink in the bottom of the anterior chamber, forming what's called hypopion. Another sign is called cyanica. Cyanica either anterior or posterior. Anterior when the iris is attached to the peripheral of the cornea. Posterior when the iris is attached to the anterior edge of the lens, like in this picture. Clinical forms, so until uveitis usually in the two form, either gramatous or uh, non gramatous. You gramatous due to usually or, uh, organismal infection characterized by, like we said, what's called mutton fat KBs. Another sign is called uh, copies nodule and busac nodule. Copies is cluster of inflammatory sin in the bibulary uh, border. Pusak hand on the peripheral part of the uh, iris. So to remember, P with the pupillary border. 
كوبي وذ بيم ريبوردر ادري بعضكم بيتلخبط بيحط البي زي هذه لا بي وهو بالبي بي بوساكا بريفير بارت سو كوبي جايه في الايدج سوري الكوبي جايه في الايدج البوساكا جايه في مور بريفرال This is the uh, answer short duration characterized by presence of fine critic precipitate. It's a common complication in aridocyclitis. It progressed rapidly in the presence of posterior cyclinia, secondary glaucoma. Can anyone tell me what type of glaucoma in uveitis usually, based on the sign we say? Inflammatory. Material also. One of the sign can affect it. Can affect to cause subtype of uh, glaucoma. Angle closure. احنا قلنا anterior cynical iris is attached to the cornea, so the angle is closed. So in case of anterior cynical, it can cause secondary angle closure glaucoma. One of the complication can also be that is. Cause is uh, cystoid macular edema, secondary to the inflammation. L in the final stage of uveitis is what's called thysis bulbi. Uh, it's it, uh, it's a result in the result of any type of uh, chronic uveitis. The causes of thysis bulbi in the ciliary body are disorganized and atrophied. This lead to decreased protection of aqueous, which produced by the ciliary body normally. As a result, the eye becomes soft and shrink due to the hypotony, low intracranial pressure. This is called thysis pulpare. So, <clears throat> in workout obtained through history and review, review the system, complete ocular exam, including IOB, Ganoscopy, dilated funded exam, and uh, fetus should be shipped. But Roviatis is, is not like other disease. Usually we ask about every systemic disease, then examine. Usually we take a brief history, a complaint previously diagnosed with any type of roviatis, briefly diagnosed with any systemic disease, Then we examine him. Then we see uh, in which category can be uh, directed. So if we see a gramatous uveitis in the examination, we will review, this, review the system on the causes of gramatous uveitis. As I said, uveitis is a large topic and it's not logic to ask about each detail of each disease that can cause uveitis. So you should be directed based on the history, the history and the exam. Then you come back and review the system. طيب هل في احتمالية أن يكون المريض عنده systemic disease and the first thing, uh, first uh, presentation is uveitis? Yes, في some disease, first presentation is uveitis like an ankylosing spondylitis. يكون عندهم back pain. Patient does not know that he has ankylosing spondylitis. He has back pain. Then he has uveitis. You examine him. You ask him about back pain. He said yes. He he thought it's only okay.
الباكيجين على الباك بندن هي اسس ذا الباك اند سي ذا ساين اوف انكلوزنج سبوندلايتس اند كان بي تريتد ا لوت اوف ديزيز اولسو ذا فيرست برزنتيشن از ذا يوفيتس سو اند ذا بيشنت داز نوت نو اباوت هي هاز سيستميك ديزيز سو ذاتس واي اتس فيري امبورتنت توبيك اليوفيتس اند اتس ون اوف ذا The main topic that we we have in common with uh, medicine. So you review the system based on the uh, symptom he has. So if you have, he has arthritis, he may have Bajet disease, Lyme disease. If he has asthma, you should rule out sarcoidosis, TB. Also, you see the examination and a TB could under him special sign. The shift is special sign. We can under who short spread or history of asthma. You should rule out B. طيب the review system هذا شوية difficult to memorize all, but I just put it here just to imagine and take an overview why diabetes is important. Like I said, one of the diseases that we will talk about is called Bajet. It's one of the most common uveitis disease that we have in this region. So you ask about oral ulcer, if he has oral ulcer, if he has genital ulcer, and he he has a sign of uveitis that related to uh, Bajet, patient should be treated by ophthalmic, ophthalmic consultant and also sent to a rheumatological consultant to treat the systemic disease. Other thing is the investigation. It's not logic to order all investigation of the all systemic disease. You should make a differential diagnosis and order the investigation that will help you to uh, define the diagnosis. Like I said, if he has back pain and sign of anterior uveitis uh, and you suspect including spondylitis, you order what's called HLA-B27. And you need to do a rheumatology consultant to rule out ankylosing spondylitis. And in citra, like in uh, sarcoidosis, you, you do cyst, uh, cystic ray, cyst CT, and uh, try to uh, exclude this disease. TB, you do BBD. What is the شباب من the Well, the treatment, we have uh, three main aims of the treatment. The first aim is prevent vision, uh, vision threatening complication like glaucoma cataract to relieve the patient from the pain. And the third thing is to treat the underlying cause of the uveitis. The principle of treatment Four principle. Rest, uh, this is ophthalmic treatment. Rest, rest, rest the eye by giving dilation to the pupil by atropine. Control acute phase of inflammation with corticosteroid. Analgesic and anti-inflammatory relief of pain and discomfort. If you have infectious cause, you need to treat him with antibiotic. Atropine is the most powerful long long-acting uh, dilation drop. Uh, it's used to migrate and psychoplegic. And atropine acts in three ways. It keeps iris and ciliary body at rest by paralyzing ciliary muscle. It also relaxes the ciliary muscle spasm, which always associated with iritis. It diminishes hyperemia by causing vasodilation, and it increases the blood supply to the anterior lovia. As a result, more antibody reach the target tissue and more toxin are absorbed. Also, it prevents formation of posterior synechia and break down recently formed synechia, which are not firmly attached by dilating the pupil. So atropine is the one of the most common uh, treatment of uveitis. There is many cause of uh, using atropine. 
causing psychoplegia, causing vasodilation, uh, vasodilation causing more antibody to reach the target tissue and more toxin are absorbed. Also prevent posterior cyanica, which increase likelihood of the cataract. Corticosteroid are anti-inflammatory in action, are very useful in controlling inflammation and acute phase due to anti-allergic and anti fibrotic activity, which reduce fibrosis. Uh, thus prevent disorganization and destruction of tissue. So this is, in any case of anterior uveitis, you need to know, is it related to systemic disease or is it idiopathic? If he, if he has idiopathic, you need to treat him with atropine, corticosteroid, analgesic, and follow up the patient if he has a recurrent case. If he has a recurrent cause of uveitis, a recurrent of, uh, attack of uveitis, you need to do systemic workup. You need to do, take a history and you need to know the underlying disease to treat the underlying disease and prevent uh, future uh, recurrent uveitis. But the main treatment is psychoplegia, uh, psychoplegia by atropine and corticosteroid. Right. Now, intermediate uveitis, most cases, more than 70% are idiopathic. Idiopathic, that means there is no underlying disease. Other causes are MS, syphilis, sarcoidosis. MS, very important uh, uh, disease that correlates with ophthalmology in many aspects. Okay, the doctor will tell you about MS and optic neuritis. So MS can cause optic neuritis, can cause six nerve palsy, can cause intermediate uveitis. And sometimes MS is diagnosed uh, by the ophthalmic, uh, ophthalmic manifestation without, uh, without any systemic uh, symptom. And if it, if it is diagnosed, you need to refer him to neuro neurology and start treatment. Treatment will decrease the uh, rate of the recurrence, uh, decrease the rate of the attack and can prevent also um, attack of the MS and slow, uh, slowing the progression of the disease. So that's why it's very important to know about the manifestation of MS in ophthalmic disease. But the intermediate uveitis is common in children and young adults. Both, uh, both eye are affected in about 80% of cases. Symptom of anterior intermediate uveitis. So uh, intermediate, uh, usually symptom, uh, patient complain of floater. Uh, there, is, uh, there are decreased vision due to opacity in the anterior aqueous. Why the opacity go to the anterior aqueous? Because spillover, what's called spillover. The cells in the anterior vitreous uh, go through the pupil and accumulate anterior. But the main, main pathology are in the pars plana part. One of the complications of the intermediate uveitis is cystoid macular edema. Sign anterior vitritis, there are mild aqueous flare with the occasional keratic uh, precipitate. It's third aspel over anterior uh, vitritis. Peripheral retinal periflebitis, it appears as isolated foci of inflammation. It may be uh, diffuse. Snow banking is gray white plague invo involving the inferior barsiplana, are seen in the aura serrata. And I will show you a picture of peripheral retinal periflebitis and snow banking. So, periflebitis, you can see here whitening around. This vessel, واضح. شوف هالفزل. Normal. In a widening around this vessel, it's called preflipitis. واضح لكم.
snow banking, as we said, white uh, material accumulating down feeder part. You can see it here. This is feeder uh, cut of a feeder, uh, feeder part of the litter. Treatment, approximately 80% uh, cases do not need any treatment. It may uh, resolve spontaneously. Uh, treat underlying uh, uh, cause if identified by history and clinical systemic workup. Posterior uveitis is choroiditis, is inflammation of the posterior uveal tract, choroid. It may be focal, multifocal, it, it may be diffuse. As the outer letter, outer retinal layer are depending upon a choroid uh, for nutrition, as we said, uh, and an anterior part of the retina is depending on the uh, central retinal artery. And the outer retinal layer is depending on the choriocabularis. So there is always associated inflammation of the retina, which is called chororetinitis. As an anterior uveitis, it, it may be granulitis or non granulitis due to the, uh, based on the pathogen. Symptom, there are diminished vision due to retinal lesion and opacity in the vitreous. Autopsia, flashes of light are seen in, due to irritation of the retina. Metaphorphopsia, straight line appear wavy due to edema of the retina. So this is the normal, uh, see, if, you see, uh, if the patient see the straight line, uh, not straight, so it's called metaphorphopsia. Micropsia and micropsia is, is the changing of the size of the object. Sign in early stage, one or more yellowish uh, with as well uh, ill-defined edge are seen in the retinal vessel. This appearance due to infiltration of the cornea of the choroid with presence of exudate. Black spots uh, are seen in floating in the vitreous vitritis. Spillover can uh, happen, so anterior, uh, anterior segment inflammation, uh, secondary to the posterior uh, inflammation. In the healing stage, yellow lesion become white due to fibrosis, and the uh, lesion are surrounded by the black pigment. So you can here see multiple choroiditis. Here the retina is not clear because of, you can see multiple choroiditis, and this is also vitritis. This is the chronic stage when it's uh, surrounded by the black pigments. Treatment is depending on the cause. You need to do systemic workup and treat the underlying cause. Bye. خلصنا المحاضرة. أحد عندي أي سؤال استفسار؟ So we will talk about specific condition associated with the VITIS. Uh, as we said, 